Okay, this is part two of what does you what does testament mean? Last week I have to correct myself. I said something last week that I have to correct this week, today, tonight. I said that Catholics, when they take the Lord's Supper, they believe that the wine turns into real blood, the blood of Christ. Well, doing the study for this week, I ran across Leviticus chapter 17, verse 12. It says, That is why I have said to the people of Israel, this is God speaking, You must never eat or drink blood. Neither you nor your uh, foreigner foreigners living among you no we're not if if they really believe they're drinking blood the Lord says here we should need or drink blood it's the scriptures so whatever Catholics might be listening to this teaching you've heard the scriptures it's up to you if you continue to do it but I needed to correct that from last week now we learned last Tuesday the covenant between men which is called a barret which involves cutting. That's what Barrett means. It involves cutting. And that's where we get blood covenant from. Because they go into a covenant, but there's blood involved. So it's called a blood covenant. The covenant would be with the family also. And that's partly what we're going to learn tonight. When you have, like Jonathan and David, when they went into blood covenant, their families are involved also. The one between Abraham and Elimelech included the family. In Genesis 21, Verses 22 through 34 speaks about that. And the one between Jacob and Laman, it included the family also. And that's in Genesis 31 verses 49 and 50. And the one between David and Jonathan, just like I said, there was a, the family was included. Now Jonathan was father, yet when they went into the covenant. But David knew that if he, had, if he got married and had kids, they would be in covenant with him also. And vice versa. And we'll see in 1 Samuel. Chapter 18. Verses 3 and 4. It says. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Because he loved them as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him. And gave it to David. And his garments. Even his sword and his bow. And his girl. The other part of this verse. Now as you as I taught last, last week. This is the, you know how you. Take the robe off and you give it to your covenant partner. Well, this is what they're doing right here. And then the rest of that covenant, which we're going to learn tonight, is 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. And may you treat me, this is Jonathan speaking, and may you treat me with the faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. But if I die, treat my family with this faithful love, even when the Lord destroyeth all your enemies from the face of the earth. So this was the other part of the covenant. And then later on, Jonathan did die. And in 2 Samuel 9, 1, it says, And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? So David, he's, asked, he's uh, wanting to know, is there anybody from the family of Jonathan? And he found out yeah, there was another son, and he sent for his son. David was ready to take care of him. Just like the verse I just said. He was ready to take care of Jonathan's son. But when Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle, there was a fear that came upon the family. They thought that David was going to kill the sons so he could be the only king. Because Saul was the king, Jonathan, his son, follows, and then Jonathan's sons. But remember, God anointed David to be king over Israel. But when they heard of his death, their death, they feared David. The family did. Because they thought, like I said, they thought they were gonna, he was going to have his sons killed. David tells them in 2 Samuel 9, 7. He says, don't be afraid. He's talking to Jonathan's son. He's telling him, don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will eat here with me at the king's table. And the reason he had to tell him, don't be afraid, was because of the lies that Saul told his grandson. You know how Saul wanted to kill David the whole time. And he's telling his grandson that. He feared David because he thought that he would kill him like his uncle, his, his, his oldest brother, Esbosheth. And that's in 2 Samuel 4, verses 5 through 8. You'll, you can read about that. 
but it wasn't David who killed him. They thought it was David. But two brothers, Rechab and Manab, went to the king's house and killed Saul's grandson and brought his head to David thinking that that would make him happy. You know, this is, this is a son. He, he could be king. Let's kill him. This will make David happy. But it didn't make David happy. It made him very angry. In fact, it made him so, oh, so angry he had the two guys killed. Now, because, Jonathan's, because of that happening, Jonathan's son hid for 16 years. He, was, he went into hiding for 16 years. When he approaches King David after all these years of hiding from him, living in a place called Lodibar, in fear of his life, so he went to a place called Lodibar to run away from David, to, to hide from David. And you know, we all have a place called Lodibar where we hide from the Lord. He's hiding from King David. But we have, we have a place like Lodibar. And some of, our, some of us hide in a, in a place called Lodibar and it's, it's your church. You know, people, they go through all the rituals and the praise and the worship, but it's not coming from the heart. They're, if you're in church and, you, and they think you're one of them, nobody's going to mess with you. But they're really hiding. That's where they're hiding. And some of us, our business, where we work, we make that our hiding place. Because we get too busy to get into the Lord's words. We don't, wanna, we, we don't want to hear what God says because we like the way we live. We know if we hear the word of God, it's going to change us. Just like Corinthians chapter 5, it says, you become a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things are now. But a lot of people hide from them. They all, every, all of us have a lowly bar once, or, you know, once in our life. Hiding away from the Lord. Now these people who do it in the church, and there are people who do it in the, after the rapture, you will have churches with people in it. You will have church. Not everybody that goes to church is a born again Christian. Going to church does not save you. It doesn't say you're a born again Christian either. And they'll find that out on the day of the rapture. And that they're going to go before the Lord on the day of judgment. And they're going to say, well, didn't we do this and didn't we do that? And God's going to tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. He tells the king, I'm not worthy of this. He tells, John, Jonathan's son tells King David, he says, I'm not worthy of this. To eat at the king's table. He's thinking of all the names he's called David. Because remember, he, think, he, he always thought that David was always trying to kill him. And he says, you don't know all the names I called you and what I've said about you. And David says, I'm not doing this because you deserve it. He says, I'm not doing it because you deserve it. I'm doing it because of my covenant with your father, Jonathan. Like I said, family is involved with the covenant also. It's just not David and Jonathan. It's the family also. And he's showing that here. So David says, I'm not doing it because you're worthy. Romans 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if any, if, any, if any of us think we deserve it, God said we all have sinned. We've all have sinned and we've all have come short of the glory of God. All of us are unworthy. All of us. Now get the picture. The king is offering this little crippled boy, because he was crippled back in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. It talks about when they heard about David, the, his... his uh, Nanny, what we call today, they took off, and when when they were running away, she dropped him, and he became crippled. But this crippled little boy has a choice to make. He told he told David, "I can't eat the king's table. I'm not worthy." Well, we just found out none of us are worthy. But David is offering him to eat at the king's table. I love the way he responded because he responded in the way we should respond to the Lord when he when he opens our eyes to him. We should be poor in spirit. Now, I taught on what is poor in spirit. The Beatitudes. Just like this little crippled boy said, I'm not worthy. But David said, no, come on. We should be the same, like I said. We should say, Lord, I am not worthy to come to you. The way I've been living, what I've been doing, I'm not worthy of it. And I taught on that. And, and that's, a good, that's a good teaching to listen to if you haven't listened to it. The Beatitudes. But David was still offering them to eat at the king's table. He says in verse 8, Who am I but a servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? That's what Jonathan's saying to David. 
Who am I? I'm not, you know, I'm a servant. I'm like a dead dog. Why are you offering this to me? And this is what Matthew 5, 3 is speaking about. Poor in spirit, like I said. We, we should not look at ourselves like we're something, we deserve it. No. We should react like this boy did. Hey, I'm a, I'm a servant. I'm like a dead dog. Why are you offering me this? So this boy had a decision to make. Stay in hiding from the Lord, like he's been doing, or come to the king's house and eat at the king's table. That's today. The same thing today. God is, is offering, offering us a place in heaven. Now, do we want to keep running from it so we can just live the way we want to live? In hiding? In the Lord bar? Or do we accept His invitation? And by accepting His invitation, what we do is we have a blood covenant with Him. Because He gave it, Jesus gave His blood. Do we accept it? Do we accept His offer, this invitation from God? To go eat at His table. Amen? Amen. Now, he, now, David did take care of Jonathan's son. Because his son finally did open his heart and realize that David was for real. That he wasn't trying to kill him and that he wanted to take care of him. Now when children get to the age to make up their own mind, if they want to stay in the covenant, like if your father is a Christian, he's in covenant with the Lord. Children, like I said, if they, they, if they die before the age of accountability, they go to heaven. But once they get to that accountability, it's up to them if they want to choose. They can choose. Okay, I want to stay in covenant. And follow the Lord like the Father did. Or they can go into the world and be lost. Hide from the Lord. So we have a choice. That's the choice we make today. Hide from the Lord or live with Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. And let me say this about children of accountability. David and Bathsheba. They had a child out of wedlock. And what happened? The Lord chastised them with the child. When you're thinking, well, why did he kill the, the child instead of David or Bathsheba? Second Samuel, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan was the prophet with David. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Now back then, if someone committed adultery, they were stoned to death. And that's what David and Bathsheba did. So they could have been stoned to death for what they did. But, but the prophet is saying, God's going to put away your sin. You will not die. In verse 14, How be it, because by his deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. David mourned. He prayed while the child was alive. But when he dies, Second Samuel Chapter 12, verse 22 and 20, 23. He said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall, I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And the reason I'm pointing that out is he went to heaven. As a father... I would rather die than my child. So which one was the worst punishment? I mean, David, I'm sure he would have said, Take me. take Kill me. Don't kill my son. So, so he was chastising David and Bathsheba. But the child went to heaven. The child went to heaven. And this is the verse that I use showing that children go, Kids go to heaven when they die. Because David was a Christian man. Remember, he was a man after God's own heart. So he was a Christian. And David said, I can't bring him back to me, but I can go be with him in heaven. Amen? Amen. Also in saying that, if there's a child out there who has an illness like Down syndrome, don't feel sorry for that kid, that baby, that child. Don't feel sorry for him. Because we have our minds. Okay? We're normal. But because, our, because of our normalcy, how many people are going to hell? A baby who has Down syndrome... He can't be accountable for any sins because he don't know what he's doing. So this baby, this child, has a free ticket to heaven. Like I said, I almost went to hell because I have all my brain there. And I almost went to hell. You see, you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So kids who, are, who have illnesses like that, I mean, love them. But 
They don't have to make that decision. God said, I'm giving you a free ticket. When you die, I'm taking you to heaven. Amen. Everything I've been saying on how to get how to go into blood covenant is in the Bible. It just scattered throughout it. It's just like uh, the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, Matthew says one thing. And then Mark might say something that Matthews didn't put in. But they're all the same. They just maybe give another account of what happened. But they all you put them all together, you got the whole story. And this is the way blood covenant is. It's throughout the Bible. Now we're going to see the covenant between God and man. We've seen what it is with men. With men but now we're going to learn how the covenant is between God and man. Which is called Dai, dai Hiki. But anyway, this covenant is where God does all the giving and we get all the blessings. When we accept them. When we accept them in this covenant, God does everything. All we do is receive. God has taken the responsibility to save us through His Son Jesus on the cross. He took the responsibility. He brought His Son down here so we could have forgiveness. He did everything. And that's in our life. We need to depend totally on the Lord. And this is what kind of coming it is between God and man. God says, hey, I'm going to do everything. Your faith, I gave it to you. Your strength that you have now, I gave it to you. He gives us everything. All we do is receive. Amen. Amen. Like I said before, most of us receive this covenant without knowing what we're doing. Most Christians don't know what they're doing when they receive the Lord. They don't even know they're going into a covenant. Most Christians are that way. But we're going to learn here a covenant with the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. If we really knew what we were doing, we would have a, a life of being free. You might say, well, free from what? John 8.32, it says, And you shall know the truth, which is the word of God, and the truth shall make you free. Like I said, free from what? Free from whatever is bringing you stress. Free from whatever is bringing you depression. Whatever is making you feel empty. Whatever is bringing you down you have low self-esteem. That's what he frees us from. That's being set free. We don't have. To, if you're walking with the Lord, you don't have to worry about these, these sicknesses. Amen? Amen? If you're walking with the Lord. The Lord is our strength. And whatever we need, whatever we need, because he says in Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, because they wanted to know, well, what do I tell the people your name is? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. I am. What do you need? You need lifting up? I am. I'll lift you up. If you need healings from this depression, stress, I'll take care of it. I am. That's what he said. I am. Whatever you need, that's what I am. Amen? Amen. Do we know that? Mm -hmm. Christians should know that. Lord, right now I'm whatever. And God says, I'll, I am. I'll take care of it. Let him take care of your problems. Let him take that's what we're here. That's why we're born again Christians. Why? That's why we give him our heart, our life, so he can take care of it. God said, I am your blood covenant God. I will. I do all the taking care of. Amen. I just want you to receive. Receive all my blessings. <laughs> how people can turn this down. <laughs> we need to learn how to allow the Lord to help us. We need to learn that. In Colossians 3 verses 15 and 16. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God. Not your problems. Don't let your problems rule you. And a lot of people do. It says let the peace of God rule in your hearts. We need to learn how to do that. How do we learn? Through the words. Through the Bible. In verse 16 he says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. He will give us all wisdom if we listen to him. He said foolish wisdom of the world is just foolishness. But God's wisdom is perfect. Amen. And if we allow that to come in us. Like I said, he sets us free from all these sicknesses. We need to believe that the words of God say what the word of God says, we need to believe it. Do you want to be set free? Believe, believe, believe. Romans 8.37 In all these things we are more than conquerors with him that loved us. We can conquer anything that comes into our lives. Anything. 
That's what he says right there. We can conquer anything through him. Are y'all hearing this? That's why the Bible says, Let him who have ears, let him hear. Amen? Amen. Let's learn from, Ab from Abram how he believed God. In Genesis 15, I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 18. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. I am thy shield. What's the robe is? What does the robe, in a covenant, what does the robe represent? Your weapons. So God said, I am, I, I am your weapons. I am your shield. I will protect you. The Lord was doing the first step of a blood covenant by saying, I'm your shield. Remember, when their assets, the covenant between men, whatever belongs to him, belongs to him. They belong to each other. Yeah. Well, like I said, this is a different blood covenant with, with God. Like I said, in this covenant, God does all to give. We don't need, we don't give anything but our heart. We give him our heart. And when you give him your heart, that says, that's saying, I'm giving you my life. I'm going to quit living the way I want to live. And I'm going to live the way you want me to live. God, God's asset is, is everything. Everything belongs to him. Everything. In Romans 8, 17. And if children, talking about us, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together we are blessed when we suffer with him Jesse how are we bless when we're set when we're suffering well Matthews chapter 5 verses 10 and 11 it says blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness though those who are living for the Lord who are prosecuted for righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and verse 11 blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The Lord said we're blessed when we suffer these things. When men talk about us, put us down. These verses are not verses that teachers or preachers like to bring to the people. You know, preachers and, and teachers, they don't like to tell their Christian brothers and sisters, oh, by the way, you're going to suffer. For being a Christian, you're going to suffer. How many of us have heard a teaching or a preaching on that? If you have, it's very rare. But the Bible says it right here. You're going to suffer for being me. Acts 20, verse 27. I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That's what we need from preachers. I am not going to run away from telling you everything that God says in the Bible. That's what that's saying right there. I will bring you everything the Lord has shown me to bring to you. Now, preachers, I'm sorry, but some preachers, they don't say that. Why? Because it will affect the tithe. It will affect what money comes in. If you're telling them they're going to suffer. Well people ain't going to give. But those are people who are preaching for themselves. They're not preaching for the Lord. When you're worried about the tithe money. And how much you're going to get. Then it's a job. It's a job. It's not a ministry. We need men who will do this. And not worry about losing members. Or being popular. You know I preach that. I'm not going to be very popular. You got preachers who. Who who look for glory. They want glory to themselves. So look who I am, you know. You got preachers like that. But if you got a preacher who's going to preach the word of God, it's not going to be popular. Remember, there's only a few going to heaven. Broad is the way to hell. So these people who are going to hell are people who don't want to hear the word of God. So if you got most people that don't want to receive God's words, then this preacher or teacher is not going to be popular. We're not going to be popular. And I'll be showing that more after a while. These two verses, it's about being prosecuted and being despised. Jesus seems to be saying there's double blessings for those who go through this. This follows, blessed are the peacemakers. And I've taught that the peacemakers are the Christians who are out there telling people about the Lord. They want peace. The Lord is peace. So if they're out there talking to people, witnessing to people, Letting their light shine, showing Jesus, the world is wicked. It's wicked. They don't want to hear it. When we suffer because of righteousness sake, it's because we're doing Matthew 6. We're hungry and thirsty for righteousness. We're hungry and we're thirsty for righteousness. We want to live for the Lord. You know, this many people don't want to. This many people want to. 
So you, you're gonna, you're, you're not gonna be, we're not gonna be popular. So if you want to be a popular person, don't be a Christian. Don't be a Christian. If you haven't suffered for being a Christian, guess what? You're not walking with the Lord. Christians will suffer for walking with the Lord. Remember, this world belongs to the devil right now. He's the prince of power of the air right now. So if you're popular in the world, then you're not walking with the Lord. I'm not going to say you're not a Christian, but you're not walking with the Lord. Because if you're walking with the Lord, your light will shine. And people who are living in the darkness don't want to come around the light. They don't want that light to flash on them. So don't stay away from you. So I say again, if you're if you want to be a popular person, then just go ahead and stay in the world. Christians are not accepted in this world. And like I said, I'll get on that more. Look at Cain and Abel. Cain Cain was jealous of, of Abel, right? That's why he killed him. Abel was walking with the Lord. Abel was walking with the Lord. He was pleasing God in his walk. And what did Cain do? He wasn't living for the Lord. And what did he do? He killed Abel. So that's how much the world hates us. If they could, they would. I mean, he did it back here. If they can, they will. If they could. Now, they don't want to go to prison. They don't want to get prosecuted. But if they could, they would kill us. And I'm going to show later, further down, they hate us. I'm going to give you the scriptures on that, but I, I'm, I'll get to that after all. If we're suffering, it's because we're obeying God. That's mainly what I can say. If we're suffering, it's because our light is shining. We're pleasing the Lord and not the world. You know, those are totally two different things. Pleasing the world, meaning your friends. When you're pleasing the world, you're not pleasing the Lord. Because those two don't go together. You can't please darkness and please the light at the same time. God's people, we're rejected people. Just like they rejected Jesus, they reject us also. For being a Christian, we'll be treated the same way that Jesus was treated. Because the world hates us. They hated Jesus, Jesus, like I said, and they will hate us too. John verse 15, no, chapter 15, verse 23. He that hateth me hateth my father also. This is what Jesus was saying. Verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Talking about if the world hates us, Christians, they hate us because they first hated Jesus. Now these are the words of God. These are scriptures. You got them in front of you. John 15, 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. You still want to be a Christian? You still want to walk with the Lord? Even though you know that the world people who are lost hate you? I mean, this is what God is saying. This is not my opinion. This is not what I think. I'm reading you the scriptures. If you're walking with the Lord, the world, the lost people, will hate you. It's the word of God. So people need to know what they're doing before they give their life to the Lord. And a lot of times when we're when people are witnessing, they don't tell them all this. we got to get away from that. You know, accept the Lord, you know, put them in your heart. And you're born again, you go to heaven. Well, no, you better tell them what that, that what that, what comes with that. You know, if you give your life to the Lord, nobody the lost people. Your friends, if they're lost, they're not going to like you. If you have family that are lost, your family is not going to like you. Just because they're family, that doesn't mean, oh, well, they're my family. They won't hate me. No, the world means whoever's lost, whoever. That doesn't leave anybody out. The hell's part of because we were one of them. Lost, wicked, but now we've gone to the other team, Team Jesus. <laughs> now, it's it's about the same thing as P and G, Indians, then the Neyland Bulldogs. If someone leaves the P and G Indians and goes to be a bulldog, ain't nobody from P and G gonna like that person, right? <laughs> Right? Tell me, am I telling you the truth? Okay, this is, hey, listen to me. This is the same way. We were on this team, but now we're on this team. Amen? It's not us against the world. It's the world against the Lord. Because of these verses, there's no way you're going to be popular, like I said, because of these verses. Especially if you're a preacher or a teacher. This is what happens when you're preaching the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10-14. through 14. Now this is Paul speaking. But you, Timothy, certainly know that I teach 
and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance. Now this is a Christian. Verse 11. You know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Ichaemen, and Lystras. But the Lord rescued me from all of this. From all of it. The Lord has rescued him from all that. Paul was especially. Paul was almost stoned to death for walking with the Lord. It was all your apostles were aged. Oh, all the apostles, all the disciples died of a cruel death. Either stoned or burnt. Or they were all killed. But Acts 14, 19. And, there, and the reason I say he was almost, they almost killed him was Acts 14, 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Ichium who persuaded, persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. So they thought they had killed him. Yes, everyone who wants to live godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Do you hear me? They didn't say you might. He said you will. And the hardest persecution to take is when it's from the family. Your friends, okay, but when family don't want to come around you because you're going to talk to the Lord, you're going to talk to them about the Lord. Like I said, the darkness does not want the light shined on them because it's going to reveal their sins. These preachers who preach nothing but prosperity, they must not be living a godly life. Look at John the Baptist, a very, very Christian man. Love the Lord. You know John the Baptist. Where did he live? He lived in the woods. What did he eat? Locusts. Was he prosperity because he was a Christian? No. So these religions out there, these men who are preaching nothing but prosperity for Christians, God never told us, if we, because you're a Christian, you can have everything you want. He never said that. In fact, he's telling us just the opposite. He says, you're going to suffer. These preachers who preach that, they preach it because money. The better they sound, the better they can make you feel, the more, the more tithe you'll, they'll get. There's a lot of men, a lot of wolves in the churches. And they're in it for the money. We've got to watch out for them. That's why we're studying the Word of God. So when we do run across a wolf, we will recognize that wolf. Any man who is asking or begging for money is not in the will of God. I'm not going to say they're not born again, but they're not in the will of God. Because when, when, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he said, don't take anything with you. I will supply everything you need. That's what Jesus told him. So if you're, in the, if you're walking with the Lord and he sends you somewhere, you don't have to go and, well, I need to come up with the money. Or No, God will supply everything you need. We do not have to beg. Not a Christian. Not when you're walking with the Lord. So these men who are begging for money or, you know, give a small donation of this or whatever. If it's from God, God will... God will take care of that ministry, whatever it is. Now back to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil people and impostors will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. The Lord is saying, it's going to get worse for us. Verse 14. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. Even though things are going to get worse, stay where you're at. Stay believing in the Lord. Because we're going to, that's part of being a Christian is suffering. You're thinking, well, why am I going through this suffering? I don't like it. I don't think I want to be a Christian. God says, no, keep with, with, with what you've been taught. You know that things that you have been taught are true, he said. Because the one who has taught you, used the scriptures. And when you get when you're under a preacher or a teacher, if they're giving you scriptures, the word of God, okay. But you get men out there, they give you one verse and they spend 30, 40 minutes on that, not giving you any more verses. I use the verse, and y'all know this. I use the scriptures to explain the scriptures. If I'm teaching you this scripture, I'm gonna use other scriptures that will back that scripture up. So it's kind of hard for anybody to say, Jesse, that's your opinion. No, when all I'm doing is giving you scriptures and you see how much scriptures I give, it's got to be the Word of God. It's, it's not my opinion. In fact, the, the Lord says, <clears throat> He says, the scriptures is not up 
for our interpretation. That's in the Bible. I forgot what verse it is. I'm sorry, but it does say that. God says the scriptures are not up for interpretation. What I say is that's it. Now we might make it up, you know, make interpretation what we think it means. But if you back up the scriptures with scriptures, it's kind of hard for people to say that's your opinion. Right. And the things that you've been taught comes from what? Comes from who? We, we learned this the other night. It comes from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you learn from the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is not going to come down here and talk to you himself. It's going to be brothers and sisters in the Lord that the Holy Spirit is using to speak to you. So yes, we are being taught by the Holy Spirit. In fact, that's one of the gifts. Teaching. That's a gift from the Lord. So when people say, well, I'm looking for the Holy Spirit to teach me. I'm not listening to no man. Well, they got it wrong. You got to listen to the man because that's who God, we, he uses our oracles, he says, to speak to others. Now, it's been happening since the beginning of time. Men who walk with God and suffer persecution. Well, this verse right here tells you, verse John 3.12, it says, Cain, who was of that wicked one, slew his brother. So it was, it was Cain who killed Abel. Right here, first John 3.12. And another, remember Joseph, the twelve brothers? Well, the other eleven despised Joseph because Joseph was pleasing to his father. And they had jealousy. And that's another teaching, but I'm just showing. This has been happening since the beginning of time where, where people, lost people, hate Christians. Hate people who walk with the Lord. Daniel, it was because of his righteousness that he was thrown into the lion's den. He didn't bow down to the image. And I'm going to say this to y'all right now. I do not pledge my allegiance to the flag. I am, I'm an American, I live here, and I praise God I'm in a country that we can have this. Where we, in other countries, they can be, they'll prosecute it if you're, if you're reading the Bible. But here we're not. And I thank God for that. But pledge, do you know what you're saying when I pledge allegiance to the flag? My allegiance goes to God only. Only. Period. Yeah. And if I get prosecuted for that, hopefully I'll be like Daniel. Whatever you do, do it. Because I'm not going to pledge my allegiance to a flag. Right. All my allegiance goes to God. Period. He God deserves it. First. He deserves it. I say it's not happening here yet. Not yet. But it's coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. This is the devil's plan. If he could only separate us from God by tempting us or bringing prosecution on us. He just wants to separate from us from our Lord. Look at Stephen's in Acts 7. He was stoned to death for telling the religious leaders and the people the truth about the Lord about getting saved through him that he was the son of God Jesus was the Christ he got stoned to death Jesus went into the synagogue to teach and the religious leaders were there Matthew 13 verse 57 and they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him we're talking about religious leaders they were offended and they refused to believe in Jesus then Jesus told them a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. It's meaning the prophet. Anyone who, who is speaking the truth, showing you the truth. It's not, you have prophets that, are, that speak the word of God, something that's coming. But then we are, anybody who speaks the word of truth, they're a prophet. Not a prophet like, like I just said. But here it's talking about anyone who tells the truth. He says, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own home and among his own family. That's why, and I've said this before, I'm not popular with the lost people. And believe it or not, I'm not very popular with religious people. Now I say religious people. Christians, they understand the word of God. They accept the word of God. But religious people, just like here, they don't accept it. So I'm not popular there and I'm not in the world and I'm sure and I'm not popular. I'm not very popular in my own church because they know I preach just the word. I don't preach Baptist doctrine. I go to a Baptist church, but I do not teach Baptist doctrine. I teach the scriptures only. And believe it or not, there are some there who don't like that. If you're in my church, if you're a Baptist, then you will teach Baptist doctrine. No, I teach the Holy Spirit doctrine. Whatever the Holy Spirit gives me, that's what I teach. 
First Peter chapter 4 verses 12 through 14 Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fury trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. He's saying this shouldn't surprise you. The scriptures in many places tells us about this happening. Verse 13, instead, now listen, instead be very glad. The Lord is telling us to be glad when we're suffering for Him. <coughs> he says, be glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in His suffering, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing His glory, heaven, when it is revealed to all the world. So we might be suffering now for being a Christian, but don't. But believe me, there we are going to have a great reward for what we're going through now. Amen. He says to be happy with great joy. That's what he says. You are in good company. We're in good company because they did the same thing with Jesus. So we're in good company. We're, we're in company with the Lord. Amen. We will be with Him on that day. With Him, Jesus, Lord, God. If you were, if you was really to to take that in, believe me, this suffering that you think you're going through, that suffering, you're gonna think that ain't nothing. I'm gonna be with Lord God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the one who has always picked me up when I was down, the one who was there when I needed strength. I'm going to live with Him forever. So this suffering I might be going through right now, see, it ain't nothing. Amen. I didn't hear any amens there, but I'm a, I'm a amen. <laughs> the Lord gives us joy. Now, we do get joy now, but it's not going to compare to when we go to be with Him. Amen. And for the rest of that verse, verse 14, So be happy when you are insulted for being a Christian. And that happens. For then the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. God, is He great? Is he good? I mean, even in our suffering, he he makes us happy. First John four four, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And who is in us? Jesus. Jesus. So anything, anything that the world throws at us, we're with the Lord. We're greater than that. Amen. Amen. God is glorified when we are cursed, when we are insulted, and we don't respond in the flesh. We do not respond in the flesh. When people say things about us, insult us or whatever, curse us, we do not respond in the flesh. Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the meek. Meek. What does meek mean? It means you're, you're humble. They might be saying that, but you don't react. We stay in the spirit. And I'll say this, uh, y'all heard it, but I'm going to say, well, man, over there, working for free old lady, I went into a store, and the guy was very upset because I priced the dip. He didn't like the way the price I put on it. And he's yeah, yeah. He just I I keep trying to tell him I that's what we recommend. But you can change the price anything you want. It's your store. But he wouldn't let me say that. And then he saw, he was cursing. So I thought I don't need to take this. So I turned around to walk out. And when I turned around to walk out, he kicked me in my butt. Oh, wow. And when he kicked me in my butt, I turned around and he threw coffee in my face. But I did not react in the flesh. In the flesh, I was meek. I turned around and walked out. Now you can only do that when you're walking in the spirit. Don't respond in the flesh when someone throws whatever at you, curse you, insults you, or whatever. Now you you might say, I don't know if I can do that. You can't do it, but the Holy Spirit that lives in you can, if you're walking in the spirit. Now this this didn't make me a great Christian or anything. I just try to walk with the Lord. I walk with the Lord. The Spirit is the one who gave me the strength to walk out of that store and not react in the flesh. The Spirit did. Not me. The Spirit. Amen? Amen. Depend on the Spirit. The Spirit will give you everything you need to overcome whatever. I'm living proof of it. So I know. I know He can. Psalms 34, 19. It says, Many the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. The Lord takes care of all of them. But what of No, no, there's no buts. God said He takes care of all of them. we got to believe that. No matter what is thrown at you, God will take care of it. We have to believe that. Amen? Amen. 